Well, good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. You know, every time that we get together, it seems more and more that God wants to do something special. You know, he just he wants us to know that we're in the right place at the right time and he's here to meet with us. And he's well pleased that we come just to be together, to be in his presence and to learn from him. Just saw a beautiful note from my Brittany who just left me a little note up here, you know. I love you too. So Father, we just praise you in this place. We love you so much. Thank you for inhabiting this place and calling us together so that we can partake of you and all that you have in mind for us in our lives. And we say yes, so let it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we've been talking about the third person you need to know. And this is part three. The third person you need to know. And we know it's the Holy Spirit, if you've been paying attention, right? Because we've been talking about this for three weeks, but we know that the Father is the first person, and from the Father came Jesus, right? So Jesus is the second person. The third person, a lot of times, we don't pay attention to. You know, we know he's there. We've sometimes, you know, heard songs, or we, you know, we know in our heart. But the third person proceeds from the Father and the Son, and he's part of the Trinity. And if we skip him, then we skip something, and we feel like we're disconnected. Right? So we want to remember, first of all, Holy Spirit is a person like Jesus. Jesus said, I'm going to send another comforter like me. Right? And so he's a person. And he's a person that wants to know you. His whole assignment is to come here to be with you and to take you right down the road that Jesus planned for you so that you can accomplish whatever he has in mind. Right? It's easy if we understand that it's already played out, it's already planned. Jesus in your, is in your future, he's in your past, he's made the way, but he just wants you to be led and helped along this path. You know, I, I think one of the main deceptions, especially in this time, this is a time of great deception, but us as believers can see what's going on in the fallen world, but a lot of people are deceived. But for the believers, there's something that the enemy has used for a long time. Now, we know this when we come into the kingdom, when we come to the king, that we receive this unity. It says in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, those that are joined with the Lord are one spirit. So you become one, right? Not similar, but one with Jesus. And so... First, the enemy wants to stop you from making that decision, but if he can't, he knows that connection, that unity, that oneness has been established. But then he gets you to think that's it, one and done. But the truth is, Paul reminds us in Ephesians 4.3, where he says, endeavor. Endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit. Now, uses the word endeavor. I don't use that word too much, so maybe we can remember that word endeavor. Work at it. You have to, right, endeavor to what? You have to keep the unity. Because even though it's established and you're going to heaven, all right, we know that, all right, and that's enough to cheer about. You're going to go to heaven after this because you've made that unity. You received Jesus as your Lord and your King, and you got free access to the kingdom, and through Jesus, you go to the Father and all the blessings of heaven. Are yours. So you have that one, you have that ticket. But Jesus also planned it out that he would show you by his life how to bring the kingdom here so that we would attract other people into the kingdom. Let's go to uh, first, first John. First John chapter 2, verses 26 and 27. 1 John 2, verse 26, 27. This is John, of course, the apostle. 
who was maybe the closest to Jesus. At least he put his head on his chest. He loved him. Right? He knew he was loved. Just like we need to know that we're loved. Jesus loves you first. They wouldn't even know what love was. So he loves you. And if you were an apostle, you would probably put your head on Jesus' chest right, and love him. But you can do that in a way now, in the spirit, every day. So 1 John 2, 26, it says, and 27, says, These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. People out there trying to deceive you as a believer. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. And it's true. It's not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Now, first, it sounds a little confusing. But what John is saying is, Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that anointing that he first brings, right, when you receive, when you receive Jesus, that anointing that he first brings, the anointing is like oil. Holy Spirit is like oil. And the word anointing, it's like smearing of the oil. Or it's like the first contact of the heavenly substance, if you will, that gets on you. It's first contact. But the deception is that that first contact, which establishes that oneness with Jesus, that it is all you need. But John is saying here, do not be deceived, that that anointing is going to do two things. It's going to teach you about truth. You know the truth. You don't need to be told specifically about it, but when, you, when it is spoken, you know it. Because that anointing gives you truth. It puts the realm of heaven on you. It makes contact with the physical realm, but the Holy Spirit is the person that brings all that's in heaven here on earth, and he stays here with you. And it's saying that with this truth of the anointing, then you know that you need to abide or stay. All right, that might still be a little confusing. Okay, let's go through it. <laughs> Look at Jesus. Jesus is always going to be our example, right? And so when Jesus, right, this is in um, Luke 4, 18. We talked about this. When he came into the synagogue, after he came out of the wilderness, he said, the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, is upon me. Why? Because he's anointed me to preach the good news. So he's brought that upon. What it was in heaven, assigned, Jesus said, I'll go. What was assigned for Jesus, just like you have an assignment, Holy Spirit brought it to him. He's upon me because he's anointed me with this truth, with this power from heaven to do, to preach the good news. And he sent me also. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to speak freedom to the captives. So this connection that John is explaining is you know it. It's true. People will deceive you into thinking that this connection, once you establish it with Jesus, that you're done. You don't have to think about it. But like Jesus, he said, no, Holy Spirit comes to anoint you for what God has written down in your book before the foundation of the world for you to do. Without that, you can't do it. And then you don't want to just accomplish what God has for you, which is awesome but you want to be sent down the path, right, that he sent you. So this anointing, again, it's like the oil that's been put on you, but what it's saying is, Holy Spirit, the third person, brings that to you so that you establish this connection in heaven. All right, let's try it like this. So we know we said, like, God the Father is the first person, Jesus is the second. The third person we need to know, and there's a progression that happens. But you're the fourth person, 
in, in that, okay? So the Father decided what you're going to do. Jesus made it able or possible to do because he opened the gates of heaven for you to enter. But Holy Spirit empowers you because he comes to earth and he gives you all you need to accomplish it. 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now the Spirit expressly says, Holy Spirit speaking himself, that in the latter days some will depart or separate from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. The enemy all day is about separation. God is about unity. Perfect unity. You're part of that equation that God wants to bring people into the kingdom. So, if you feel at a point, I, you know, I know this, I understand the Father loves me, and he's the Father of all of us, and Jesus is my Savior, my Lord, and he's my shepherd. He, fought, you know, he, he goes ahead, and the Holy Spirit empowers me, gives me the truth, keeps me connected to the kingdom. But when you feel disconnected, this is the time that you need to seek Holy Spirit. He's the one that helps you. He's always thinking of Jesus. He glorifies Jesus. He doesn't say anything except what Jesus tells him to say, right? And we know we've studied this, that Jesus said, I only say what the Father tells me to say. I only do what the Father shows me. There's a perfect unity in the glory. And you're part of it. All right, so we need to endeavor, though. We need to endeavor. Because this unity is the deception is, okay, well, yeah, but you're still on your own, kind of. You have to figure it out. The truth is, this perfect unity, and you just have to go to the third person. Okay, you're here to help me accomplish this part. Okay, you keep me to Jesus. Jesus keeps me to the Father. You walk in this perfect unity of the kingdom. But we've got to endeavor, right? We have to do something to stay connected. And part of what we do is we actively seek the gifts. If you want the gifts, we talked about a few of them last week, then you need to engage Holy Spirit. They're his gifts. They're his gifts. The only reason for the gifts is to help you accomplish what God has planned for you to accomplish. Because as you use them, and you operate in them, people know, wow, God's real. Holy Spirit, you engage him, and you're able to do, through him, something supernatural. And people say, wow, this is true. God is real. Jesus is real. I want in. And in these end, in these end times, you've got to be more aware. How do I do this? How do I engage with Holy Spirit, Right? How do I endeavor? How do I work at it to show people that this is real? So we did, we talked about some of the, the gifts. Because to, for a word of knowledge, you got to ask for it, pretty much. Okay, you have to ask, you have to engage Holy Spirit. Word of knowledge, do you have something you want me to tell that person? And it comes right from him. And if you tell somebody that you have no way of knowing except if God told you, they know God's real. We talked about a word, a word of knowledge. It's something that you don't know in the natural, but God just tells you. And he does it for a reason, because he wants them to believe. There's also um, a word of wisdom. Word of wisdom is something you don't know the answer. You don't know the solution. But you go to Holy Spirit, what? How? And he'll give you an answer. He'll give you a solution. We do that a lot with the cottage. All of a sudden, we've become contractors and carpenters and all kinds of, you know, we have this expertise, which is not of me or Sandra, but suddenly we're putting up things and we're designing things because we're like, what is it, Lord? What is it? And you gauge Holy Spirit. And he says, well, do this. Well, look at that. Lo and behold, it works. And we talked about discerning of spirits. Okay, some people just, you know, like we talked about Brittany, she operates in this a lot. Why Holy Spirit, like, highlights it to her? Because perhaps, you know, it's just the way she was designed. God wants her maybe to operate more. But the truth is, God wants us to operate 
in all the gifts, in every one of them. There's not one, okay, well, you're, you got that and you have that. You may choose to operate in one more, but discerning of spirits is when God shows you what's behind the problem. You see a situation, or you get up in the morning, and this happens to me a lot, you get up, you got to be with the Lord, that's what I do, have to go, be with the Lord, and sometimes there's a block, sometimes there's something, I'm like, what is going on? And I have to speak against demonic entities to get out, and then all of a sudden I feel, I sense the open hand, God's there. Kenneth Hagin tells a story about when he was praying to the Lord and he could see the Lord. And there was this little being that was jumping up and down in between them. And he's thinking, Lord, why don't you tell that thing to get out of the way? I can't hear you. Right? Finally, he just got frustrated. He tell the thing, get out in the name of Jesus. And Jesus told him, if you didn't do that, I couldn't have. Because we have the final say here. We have dominion. So discerning of spirits is for that. To clear the way, get that thing out. Now that's three. There's actually, all together, there are there's nine ways for you to engage with the Holy Spirit, work with him, and to show that God is real, and give people encouragement. Remember, all these things are for encouragement, to build people up, so that we all come into the unity of the faith. So prophecy, it's a message of encouragement from God to somebody else, and it says in 1 Corinthians 14.3, But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. God wants to build you up. The enemy wants to tear you down. God wants to build you up. He can give you a message. He can give you something. But it's always to provide safety or health. Or, you know, something that he wants you to know. It's something to build you up, to protect you, to take care of you. If someone says, well, you know, God is saying that you're no good, or God says you're not going to make it, that's not prophecy, all right? That is not, you have to be able to speak against that. Because the enemy, of course, tries to duplicate. He tries to deceive, and deception is subtle. Deception is using what God has already put together and twist it. Some people say, whoa, wait a minute, God is saying, saying this. I don't know, maybe it's my fault. You know, that's not God. Prophecy is to be built, to build you up, to encourage you. And then there's tongues and interpretation tongues. There's two different things. Now tongues, we all know if you speak in tongues, you should speak in your heavenly language as much as you can because you're speaking the perfect wisdom of God, you're building yourself up in your most holy faith. This is a, a special gift. This is not what this is talking about right here exactly, but your own personal language to God. You speak to him. A lot of times we speak in English, and then, you know, the enemy will interrupt, and then you say, well, maybe that didn't get through. I don't even know. Maybe that, that's not true. But if you're speaking in an unknown language, to you, you don't know what you're saying, but you know that it's going to heaven and is speaking the perfect will of God. That's the perfect prayers. We need to do that more in these last times. But this particular gift is talking about in a setting like this, in a, in a group setting, where there is no unbelievers, but there's people, everybody knows God, right? And it's important, you find out, a lot of times you ask the pastor, and then the pastor gives permission for there to be someone who speaks in tongues, and somebody who interprets the tongue, right? That's two separate gifts. And um, I used to have in my, when I was in Karis Bible College, I had this couple where the woman would speak in the tongue and the husband would interpret it. And they did that in class a couple of times. And I went with them on a mission trip to Scotland and Ireland. And this one time in a church in Scotland, she said, I, I have, and she asked her husband, I have, I really feel impressed to give a word in tongues. She asked the pastor, and the pastor said, okay, go ahead. And so she just had this long tongue, powerful, and then the husband interpreted it. 
Now, he didn't say as many words as her, because remember, it's an interpretation. It's not a translation. Okay? But he interpreted it. And it was a powerful message of encouragement to all the people that were there. But the way that God used it, there was also an African young man in the church that had come over on a mission trip and met the love of his life in Scotland. But he was like wondering, he had been praying, what do I do? Do I go back or do I stay? Now, she did this. She didn't know what she was saying, but it turns out that she was speaking in a specific African dialect in this little village and told this young man in his dialect, stay, God has a plan for you here. So, I mean, God can do amazing things, right? So this gift, we don't really know, but when you feel the urge to do it, you just release it. Now, it is an interpretation. So if you feel like, you know what, someone is, um, it releases a tongue and you feel like you have an interpretation, again, it's not a translation, so you don't have to think it through. I don't know exactly. It's not the words. that God will give you the message to release. When Sandra and I, we were, when we were in India, uh, at some of the villages, it was tough because there was, we needed two translators or two interpreters. No, actually, they, they were translators. Or uh, they tried to be. Anyway, it's like at the UN, right? There's a translator. It's word for word. But when you go on the mission field, or according to this, right, it's an interpretation. But so we had two interpreters, and Sandra was speaking to a, a, a church of mostly all women, I think there was all women that day, and they were like riveted and they were listening, but it took, you know, a little bit because she had to speak, then one pastor had to speak to the other pastor and the other pastor spoke, you know, to the congregation. And there was one point, and I'm thinking, wow, she's really getting these people, the, the girls are like riveted and she's going deep and she's talking about something really serious and all of a sudden there's a big giggle that goes out throughout the crowd. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I probably wasn't interpreted properly, but still, it's something that we need to do, and God calls us to do it. And um, there's a lot of these. Stay with me. Are you staying with me? Are you staying with me? Okay. There's a couple. There's only three more, but it's important to know. So there's, these are gifts you ask for, because when you ask for them, the Holy Spirit says, okay, we're engaged. We can get something done. You're calling on me. All right, so I can, with my help, you can, you can, you can get this word out, or you can encourage somebody. So one of, the next one is called faith. It's a gift of faith. It's a supernatural belief and confidence. And, you know, God's given that to me. I just, if God says do it, I just say, okay, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that we all want to have, this supernatural, absolute. If God says it, then other people say, well, you know, well, maybe I'm just like, listen, that's it. God said it. Boom. Right? Have faith. You stay. Even if things don't happen the way you think they should happen. But, you know, God heals. Still, I went through a procedure on my shoulder. But I knew God said, listen, I'm going to take care of it. And I'm like, but Lord, you healed me from this and that. And can't you just do it the way that I think it should be done? You know, that would be good. I mean, I could, no, I could just, just do this. Okay. I believe. And, you know, so God will take you down the road that he wants to take you. But you've got to have that faith. And so it's a supernatural belief and confidence in a specific situation. Ask for it to experience it. Next one is gift of healing. Now, we can all heal. God, you know, Jesus went around and healed everybody. He did everything. He healed everybody, all kinds of sickness, all disease. So we know that healing is part of the kingdom. But there's a gift when God wants something to happen specifically and powerfully and again, you just pray for it. Some people, their whole ministry, you know, like a Catherine Kuhlman, you know, or Benny Hinn, people like that, where they just, you feel, wow, they're operating in this gift of healing. But it'll happen at times when you just say, Lord, you know, you just pray about it and you ask God to give it to you. We had a woman, you know, healed a couple of Sundays ago, and it was just like we could sense like the flow of power coming and even the woman responded in such a way that she like, oh, you know. And what is that for? It's just so we all get encouraged. Like, wow, God, you are awesome. You know, you're doing what you said you would do. 
And the last one, and you can work on all nine of these, the last one is the working of miracles. It's a divine intervention that alters natural circumstances. It's a gift. It's a way to become one with God. One thing that I remember that happened, we had a lot of these happen, like in Colorado and different places, but um, this one, one more quick story, is that we lived in Colorado Springs, and, you know, Colorado's kind of dry, it's dry most of the time, but if it rains, there's situations because there's streams that are underneath the ground and stuff like that, and it causes problems. So we were there four years. The first year that we were there, we had this rainstorm, and we had our neighbor to our left, a neighbor across the street, a neighbor down the street, and they're, they all flooded, their basements flooded, and we just had like a little drip, you know, in ours, and you know, and we prayed over our place and everything, but we were like, man, what in the world? So we helped them move all their stuff. I mean, a lot of work. I mean, the whole basement's got ruined, and oh my gosh. So that's bad enough. They do, the, they fix it up, and they, you know, they're like, you know, I mean, dragging rugs and furniture and everything. Next year, it happens again. Same thing over here. So we're like, one guy moved out. The guy at the end of the street said, enough, I'm out of here. He left. Uh, this neighborhood's, you know, he literally left. The guy that was across the street from us, you know, one of Nicholas's best friends lived there, and it felt bad. We just finished his, you know, the basement, and his bedroom was down there, and it got all washed out again. And the Lord says, did you speak to that, to tell that thing to move? I'm like, no. I didn't know I was supposed to do it. But you can go. So the Lord said, go. And I walked out to this person's lawn across the street. And the Lord told me this. He said, speak to this. He said, there's a stream. He said, speak to the stream and tell it to go in a direction that doesn't affect anybody. So I said, all right, well, in the name of Jesus, I speak to that stream, the underground stream, that it comes and it goes where it doesn't affect anybody. And lo and behold, it was gone. Right? And I had nothing to do with it except obedience. Right? I didn't even ask. But God will show you to operate in these things because he wants to, all of a sudden, the people across the street were more, I don't know, I never told anybody. So, but this is the same guy that got healed, that we prayed for him, and he, you know. Yeah. So Joe, we love Joe. Whom Joe is like, he's that neighbor you want. It's kind of like Fred. You know, he's willing to help, no matter what. You know, he'll just, he'll just help you out. But, you know, God is is working in the supernatural realm. He wants us all to live supernaturally. He wants us to expect miracles. And in this time where the fallen world is broken and can't get up, we're like, listen, we're gonna live supernaturally. We're gonna engage. We're gonna ask for the, the blessings. We're gonna ask for the miracles. We're gonna operate in these gifts. People need to know when they send time before it's too late. God is real, the kingdom is real, and the time is now to come in. And by you asking, Lord, just show me, give me the gifts that I can operate in, other people will know. And that's really what we're here for, right? We are here at the end of the day. We're all going to be in heaven, everybody that believes. And we're going to be hanging out with no stress. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to say, wow, I'm glad that we did that. You know, I'm glad I took the effort and I went and I diligently sought. I endeavored to keep the unity by working with Holy Spirit and watching the kingdom come. And God's will be done. You know, sometimes you feel like, you, you know, you just get into something and you can go forever. But then, you know, no, that wouldn't be a good idea. You know, so we're going to wrap this up. Hallelujah. But Father, we do love you so much. We thank you that you've given us the opportunity to work with Holy Spirit, to use the gifts that he has and operate in them. Lord, and we just speak today that everybody right here, everybody watching online, everybody here, just gets the unction, hallelujah, to work in the gifts, to show the miracles of the kingdom, to show, yes, there is a kingdom and there is a king and you need in. So, Father, help us. We ask your Holy Spirit to engage us as we diligently engage you. Help us to partake of the gifts and use them for your glory, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.